Joining us now is retired General Wesley Clark, former Supreme Allied Commander of NATO. He's also a senior fellow at UCLA's Burkle Center and a former presidential candidate. Good morning, General. Good let me morning, start General. out by uh, let me start out by asking you about President Obama. We just heard him talk about a leaner military. What kind of message does a leaner military send to not only our allies around the world but our enemies? Well, I think to our allies it says they've got to step up and do more, particularly our allies in Europe. But to the allies in Asia, this is a strong message. He's saying we're strengthening our capabilities in Asia. We're going to provide an important strategic counterweight to a growing Chinese military. We're emphasizing diplomacy and stability, but we do have military muscle. So this is a strong message. But you know very well, as the former top guy at NATO, that asking allies to step up is sometimes a bit of a challenge they don't meet. It's a tough message for NATO, but we'll still have forces in Europe. We'll still have the structure of NATO there. And the truth is that nations and alliances must evolve their forces and strategy as conditions change. We, we're, we're out of Iraq. We're coming out of Afghanistan. We built the force structure that we have right now to deal with those two problems. And I don't think there are that many Americans who would say, hey, let's keep those forces in Afghanistan and in Iraq indefinitely. They'd say, take the resources we have and use them to best meet America's security needs. Those but needs General, are in Asia, cybersecurity, space. This isn't just a question of our allies, as we said at the top, also a question of message sent to our enemies. So what kind of, of message do you think is being communicated there with this call for a leaner force? Well, I think as far as the Iranians are concerned, they very well understand that the U.S. can totally dominate the Gulf and totally suppress, attack, destroy any effort by Iran to block the Gulf shipments. So there's no change in the message to Iran. To China, which is not an adversary, but it is a strategic competitor, there's a message that the United States is and will remain a strong power in the Western Pacific and maybe even an increasingly strong power in the Western Pacific. So this is a strong message. General, the top Republican on the House Armed Services Committee, uh, Representative Buck McKean, said about the plan, I want to run this by you, the president has packaged our retreat from the world in the guise of a new strategy to mask his divestment of our military and national defense. So some people are saying it's responsible, Chairman McKean, or Representative McKean, saying that this is too severe. Is there a point to be made? It's just too much. Well, I don't think yet. I think it's appropriate when requirements change that strategy and resources are rebalanced to most effectively put those resources to work against the greatest challenges. That's what's happening here. Of course, we're all concerned about the men and women in the armed forces, but I think we, all, we have to keep this in, in perspective, Jim. At the end of the Gulf War, 1991, 92, under the Bush administration, the United States cut back its Cold War armed forces. We reduced the Army from 18 divisions to 12 divisions to 10 divisions. We rebalanced the force. That's the force we carried through the 1990s. That's the force that did so well when we had to go into Afghanistan in 2001 and into Iraq in 2003. So we can effectively adjust force size, not by wholesale whacking, but 5 and 10 percent here and there, shrinking and growing, it can be done, and it better distributes scarce defense resources to meet the most pressing challenges. General Clark, we're going to have to leave it there, I'm afraid. Listen, I want to thank you very much for joining us this morning. Wesley Clark. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Jim.